Hello and welcome to the channel. On this episode we are going to be doing a spark plug and coil service on a BMW X5 E70 chassis. This has the N55 engine in it. It's a 3 liter inline 6 cylinder with a single turbocharger. First thing you're going to want to do is after you pop the hood is remove the engine cover simply pops up. You want to set it to the side. Next what we're going to do is remove the uh, intake air filter box. First thing you got to do is release this clamp. You're just going to need a six millimeter uh, socket. It can be quarter inch, three eighths drive, or you can use a flathead screwdriver. I've just found that sockets work a little easier once you've got that loose. And they're gonna move over here and the battery cables and engine harnesses go onto these metal brackets. I'm just gonna slide them up and off. And then to remove this piece right here, you're just gonna simply pull up on it, set it to the side. And then to remove the airbox, I'm just gonna pull up on it, twist it out of the intake pipe and set that to the side as well. The next step in the process is going to be to remove the intake pipe here. Comes over the top of the valve cover and down down through the passenger side of the valve cover. First thing you're going to want to do is using a 10 millimeter socket, you're going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt right here. Next, you're going to remove the ventilation line that's attached to it. You just squeeze the, uh, the fitting here and it'll release the catches. And then you can just tuck it to the side. Next we can release the vacuum line that's down here on the passenger side of the valve cover. There's just a plastic catch here. Just going to want to open it to allow the uh, vacuum line to slide out of it. Then we have our uh, oil separator ventilation line. It's got a connector on it. Just apply a little downward pressure on the connector end and it'll pop right out. Then using a six millimeter socket, we're gonna release this clamp down here. It connects the intake pipe to the intermediate pipe that connects to the turbo. You don't wanna release the clamp all the way so that it, you wanna still wanna keep it in one piece. And then last is this line right, is the oil separator line again. We have to release it from the valve cover you're going to want to take your time with this as these over time they get they're plastic they get very brittle and can break um, if you're going to attempt to do this by yourself I would recommend go ahead and buy one of these so that if it does break you can replace it the easiest thing I found is you're just going to, want to take a pick and grab the neck and then just release the tabs Uh, this one's already had a, has a tab on top that's broken, but you would release that one as well. And then once you have those tabs released from the collar, I just place the pick inside the groove that it creates and give it some taps. And most of the time they pop out like that without breaking anything. So now the pipe is released and the last thing we have to do is release the mass airflow sensor. Again, use a pick and you're gonna pick up on the tab, kinda of just got a feel for it, and release the connector. And then the pipe is held down by one soft fitting back here. You just pop it up and kinda of twist it 
towards the passenger side of the vehicle to get the oil separator line out of the way and then just rock it off the uh, the intake pipe to the turbo. Be careful not to lose the clamp that attaches it. Once you have the intake pipe off, you can go ahead and set that to the side. The next step in the process is going to be to remove the harness cover here. Just kind of pry up on it and it'll pop free. And then using a T25 socket, there's going to be three T25 screws down here. The, t the one in the middle is not the one that you have to release. This one's our missing one, but this one right here, this first one right here, you're going to release that one. And then if this vehicle had the back one, you would release that one too. Be careful not to drop the screw. And then to get the driver's side of the um, bracket up. You're just going to stick your finger in this pocket right here and then push towards you. It's going to release it from the catch. And then you can pull the harnesses out of the trim piece and remove the trim piece completely. That releases the foam that you can then take off. Set that to the side. Next, we're going to have to remove this bracket that holds the oxygen sensor connectors due to it blocking access to the cylinder number five coil and spark plug. To remove the connectors from the bracket, you just simply just pull up on them. And then to remove the bracket, it has one bolt right here. It's going to be either a T25 or a T30. And then lastly, it has a connector harness that goes down here to the wastegate solenoid. You take it off. You can set that to the side. You can leave the oxygen sensors connected. They don't need to you know, come off, or come apart in order to do this. But once you're at this point, you have access to all six coils and thus all six spark plugs. So the next thing we're going to do is remove each coil. process is going to be the same for all of them. You're going to pull up on the connector. It will slightly release the coil connector. Pull it out. Stick your finger in the loophole and then pull the coil straight out. And then repeat the process for the rest of the coils. So now we have all the coils removed, we can go ahead and remove all the spark plugs. You're going to need the uh, 14 millimeter 12 point socket, at least a, a deep socket if you don't have the exact spark plug socket. And then you're going to need about 6 to 8 inches of extensions. I'm just going to feed it on there. I've got an electric ratchet, so you break it loose. You'll know it's released when the ratchet goes from moving at like a medium speed and the speed picks up.
for those back two because of the space you usually have to put the socket in the socket and extension in first and then put your tool on and then reverse the process to switch to the next cylinder. Just move the harness out of the way. Feed the extension out of the last one. And then grab a magnet and insert it into each coil well to retrieve each of the spark plugs. So now we have our six spark plugs. So now we're ready to go ahead and install the new ones. When you pull the spark plugs out, you're going to look at the condition of them. You're going to look for any ones that are significantly darker than the other. If they look wet, you're going to want to take a quick smell to see if it's oil or fuel. Spark plug can give you a great indication of the internal health of the engine and how it's operating. As you can see with all these spark plugs, none of them look significantly different than the others. So that indicates that everything is working just fine. So we've got one old plug and one of our new OEM plugs. It's always a good practice to go ahead and look at them side by side. You're gonna to wanna to make sure the gap looks the same, the electrode position is the same, the amount of porcelain exposed is the same, and as well as the thread pitch and diameter. Mistakes can be made and you do not want to put the wrong spark plugs inside of an engine. It could actually cause catastrophic damage. So yeah, verified that this spark plug is the same as the ones that came out of the vehicle. So now we can go ahead and move to installing the new spark plugs. When you're installing new spark plugs, I always recommend that you do it by hand. Do not use power tools as you do not want to cross thread the threads inside the head. These spark plugs, you're just going to want to insert each plug into the cylinder well. Insert your ratchet and then by hand rotate the extension until it engages the threads inside the cylinder head and then you can use the ratchet once it bottoms out with the threads you can go ahead and just you can give it a little bit more force and then you're going to go ahead and pull that out we're going to come back and torque all these at once later. You're going to repeat that process for the other remaining five cylinders. You don't want to just drop the plug inside the cylinder well, or the coil well rather. You don't want to risk possibly ever so slightly bending the electrode. So just what I do is I pinch the spark plug against the coil well, 
with my finger and then once it is in the bottom of the cylinder well, or the coil well I let it go and that prevents any possible damage to the spark plug electrode We have all six spark plugs secured inside their coil wells. We're going to go ahead and torque them down. The torque spec is listed on the box. Each spark plug needs to be torqued to 23 Newton meters. Once all six spark plugs have been torqued down, we can go ahead and reinstall the coils, or in this case, we're going to be replacing all six coils. This vehicle has 113,000 miles on it, so it's a good idea to do this to prevent any future coil failures. All right, so to install the coil, you're just going to take your coil and you're going to orient this portion with the cutout that's in the cylinder head. Basically, just reinstall it the way it came out. You want to push it fully, fully seating it, and then you can line up the connector and push it in and then lock it into place. And then you will repeat that process for the remaining five coils. They're going to be oriented in different directions, so just be mindful of that. So now we have all of our coils installed. We can go ahead and start reassembling the vehicle. First thing is going to be to reinstall that bracket with the wastegate solenoid connector on it. Seat the connector. Grab your T25 screw and then just kind of hold it up so you can see it visually. Visually line up with the hole and then you can reinstall your oxygen sensor connectors. Just make sure everything's in place. Definitely don't want to do something twice. And you can reinstall the foam insulation. You want to make sure the 
mass airflow sensor harness gets fed through the hole in the foam. And then there's a kind of like a piece right here that goes through the foam as well. And we can reinstall the engine over harness trim cover, lock it into place over there, and then grab your other T25. And this one, because of the angle of it, I like to try and get it started by hand so that you don't mess up where it goes. And you can reinstall the harness. It'll kind of just pop into place. And then reinstall the cover. You want to install the passenger side first. It's going to lock in underneath a little plastic ledge and then just push firmly down and that's it. Next is we'll reinstall the uh, intake pipe to the turbo. I'm going to start by inserting the bottom side of it first and get it started on the pipe and then rock it back and rock it towards the driver's side and use your thumb here to kind of partially align the, um, the oil vapor hose and then just firmly push it in place and that'll finish seating it. And then it's just a matter of hooking everything else back up. So we've got our connector Got our vacuum line. Got our mass airflow sensor. Ventilation line. And then lastly, the uh, clamp at the bottom. Again, just use like a six millimeter socket. Doesn't need to be too tight, but you just want to make sure the clamp fully is seated in the ledge of the uh, intake pipe. And then, and then lastly, the uh, 10 millimeter bolt. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and reinstall the air filter box. Just gonna push it into the uh, intake tube, align it with the holes in the bottom, and give it a good push down and then reinstall the harnesses. And this one is broken. And then tighten the clamp. And then install the pre-air filter intake tube. And lastly, the engine cover kind of lines up with the intake tube and then seats onto the valve cover around the oil filter or oil fill cap. 
So next we're going to go ahead and turn the vehicle on to make sure it idles and runs okay. We have the vehicle running now. Just want to look over your work, make sure connectors are in place, hoses and lines are in place, nothing's loose, idles okay. This is gonna to conclude today's episode on a spark plug service for a 2011 BMW X5 E70 chassis with the N55 inline six cylinder turbo engine. The maintenance interval on spark plugs on these turbocharged BMWs is linked in with the oil service. It's typically around the fifth or sixth oil service. So depending on how many miles the vehicle's driven a year, the service interval on the spark plug can vary anywhere from 35 to 60,000 miles. Uh, it's definitely something that is highly recommended to do at these service intervals due to the heat and performance of these engines, turbocharging, direct injection. I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe for future content. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next one.